Welcome to the Michael Jackson News Digest, July 7, 2020. Here are today's headlines. MJ makes chart history again. Secret diary finally revealed. Problematic Pearl Jr. Karma for Cocker. Robson case dropped and get bit with Michael. So a lot to be going on with. Okay, so our first story. Uh, this has been all over social media. So this is from Reddit. Michael's number one's album is the longest charting album released this century. It has now spent 450 weeks in the UK official albums chart top 100. So has it? Let's have a look. So this is from Forbes. Uh, this was from today. Uh, Number 47 on the UK charts, uh, one of the most successful artists ever. It's no surprise that the British people continue to purchase and listen to MJ's number ones on streaming sites like Spotify and Apple Music. The compilation has now amazingly found space between number ones and 100 for 450 frames. So what it's saying here is it has spent 450 uh, non-consecutive weeks on the UK album charts. And it's saying the set is Jackson's longest charting title. It doesn't say anything about it being the longest charting album this century. Century, uh, but let's have a look at Wikipedia. So this is a, a breakdown of the two hundred, uh, the albums that have spent two hundred or more weeks uh, on the charts, and this is going back for uh, looks like it starts in nineteen fifty six. But we want to look at this century, so let's have a look at two from the year two thousand, or perhaps it's two thousand and one. Uh, so here we go. So yes, number ones released in two thousand and three. Um, at this point, it spent four hundred thirty eight weeks on the charts. Uh, and this information was taken from 2015. So obviously that is going to continue to grow, uh, but and it has done uh, since 2015 to 2020. There's no other albums. Uh, the only other album that's close to that is uh, Back to Black, Amy Winehouse, uh, 429 weeks, but that's taking into account two different versions of the albums, the deluxe and the original version. Uh, so it's clear that even from 2015, it was the longest charting album in history. Um, obviously, uh, this chart includes Off the Wall and Thriller. So what is it about the number one's album that has captured the imagination of the public? Well, I kind of see it as the junk food of the Michael Jackson albums. It's full of radio edits. Um, you don't get the full banquet of Michael's music. Easily accessible for the public. Um, not, it's not such a great collection for us MJ fans, I guess. Uh, but this is something, obviously, that the estate are paying close attention to. So expect more greatest hits albums in the future. So our next story is from The Express. Oh dear, someone's trying to kill me, Michael Jackson's secret diary exposed in fiery new book. Express, a, a few days ago I reported on the fact that you published a 100% positive MJ article and you've undone all that good work. Uh, Michael Jackson's never seen before diary has been exposed in an explosive new book on the King of Pop. And I was just saying a few days ago, maybe a week ago, wouldn't it be good if there was some kind of book that was like a Michael Jackson diary that detailed everything? So is this... What I was hoping for, I don't think it will be. Um, okay, but now a new book by investigative journalist Dylan Howard, oh no, it's that book, um, has revealed he claim has revealed what he claims to be a never seen before diary, which gives an intimate insight into the mind. Okay. Uh, original pages of the document are reproduced in bad and unprecedented investigation into the Michael Jackson cover up. Oh, do we really need this book? No, we don't. Uh, apparently it's a new account of the singer's life, is it? Is it really? Uh, according to the diary, Jackson was hoping to earn £20 million uh, a week and believed he had the potential to become the first multi-billionaire entertainer, actor, director. So let's have a look at this diary. Ah, so this isn't a diary at all. It's these notes that have been in circulation for years. Uh, I'm not going to show the front cover of the book. Um, so is the book claiming that these are diary excerpts? We know this book is based on a load of bullshit. Uh, might read it for research purposes, and if so, I'll do a special report. So here is York Yorkpedia. Uh, new Michael Jackson trailer released. I thought, all oh, good, what is it? And it's this. It's Alive 4. Not heard of Yorkpedia editorial before, but let's go on. On June 25, 2020, the 11th anniversary of the death announcement of Michael Jackson occurred without much funfare. What? Also on that day, a new documentary called Alive 4, Michael Jackson, The Missing Pieces, was released to become a smash critical success for Michael Jackson fans in more than 20 countries. What? Was it really? So what, we were more concerned with Alive 4 than we were with celebrating uh, the 11th anniversary? Oh, 
Uh, Alive for uh, Michael Jackson, The Missing Pieces, has been reviewed by Michael Jackson's most dedicated, informed and engaged fans who have stated Alive 4 as their new favourite. Really? I haven't. Have you? Where is this coming from? Who? What is your Wikipedia editorial? Hold on, there's Pearl's email address there. Mm, this is becoming a bit suspicious. Well, issue wire. Okay, so that link at the bottom, issue wire. Uh, this is a service where people can send press releases uh, to issue wire, and they will feed it out to relevant news agencies. I, so this is obviously coming from Pearl. I doubt very much that Yorkpedia is the kind of news agency she was sending it to. Let's have a look at the original article just to confirm that this is from Pearl Junior. Uh, where are we? Yes, exactly the same, my dear Pearl. Okay, so Jarvis Cocker reveals how David Bowie saved him after Michael Jackson incident at Brit Awards. Interesting headline. Um, Jarvis Cocker save, being saved after the Michael Jackson incident. It almost sounds as if uh, it was Michael Jackson doing something to Jarvis and not the other way around. And you've got to watch these tricky headlines. Um, and it's interesting that Jarvis Cocker, a musician as talented as he is, is still harping on about this. Perhaps this is his greatest claim to fame. Uh, Jarvis Cocker has revealed that David Bowie saved him following the controversy that took place when he infamously hijacked Michael Jackson's performance at the Brit Awards in 1996. During the ceremony, Cocker made a cameo on stage which was unwelcomed by Jackson and saw the former pulp man protest how Jackson sees himself as some kind of Christ-like figure with the power of healing. Now, I'm not a particularly religious man, but what is wrong with... Uh, being inspired by Christ and sending out a message of healing. I'm not saying that's what Michael was intending with that performance, perhaps he was, uh, but I think this kind of speaks more about Cocker as a person than it does about Jackson. Uh, following this controversial Incident, Cocker was arrested but was later released without being charged. However, the night's events would follow the pulp singer around everywhere he went like an albatross for the next few years. Oh, that's a bit deverish, that's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Uh, discussing the incident in a new interview with the New York Times, Cocker says that the incident changed my life forever uh, because of the fallout, going on to reveal how Bowie ended up proving an unlikely lifeline for the pulp frontman. In the UK, suddenly I was crazily recognised and I couldn't go out anymore, he revealed. It tipped me into a level of celebrity I couldn't ever have known existed and wasn't equipped for. It had a massive, generally detrimental effect on my mental health. Well, maybe you should have thought about your actions before you did them. Perhaps this is karma. Okay, so let's look into the uh, Robson Safe Chuck uh, case. So there's been uh, reports on Twitter that the case has been dropped. This isn't the case. Uh, and this is, uh, I've asked Anne Justice for some, for some help with this. And she pointed me in the direction of To Do Pillow, MJ, uh, and a few others. I will be putting uh, their Twitter links in the description so you can follow the case. They know a lot more about this than I do. Uh, so has the case been dropped? Well, let's have a look. Um, so to do pillow MJ is basically saying that this news that the case has been dropped has come from an email. So this is the full email. Um, it's basically saying that uh, where do we where do we start with this? Notice that Finaldi, Finaldi is the uh, lawyer for the other side, is not dropping the case or anything. He simply wanted to know whether he'd need to file a motion to remove and add causes of action. Uh, but he actually did this in, uh, which he did file in December, uh, read the following tweet. So this is the email that he sent. Uh, I presume he sent this to the judge and he's just asking if he can remove certain actions uh, and include others. And one of the actions he wanted to uh, remove, well, it seems to be all of them, are about the child sexual abuse allegations. Uh, so th that email is from September 2016. The motion was uh, ruled in his favour in December of that year. Notice that the motion aims to remove all causes of action regarding sexual abuse. So they aren't denying these claims though. What they've done is actually they're rebuilding the case. Uh, so this is, it looks like it's a renewal of the following allegations from the Third Amendment um, and all allegations pertaining to the causes of action for childhood sexual abuse, sexual battery and assault and battery um, is been, uh, they've asked for them to be removed. And this is so they can rebuild the case to make it a stronger case because obviously they haven't got a leg to stand on when it comes to uh, the sex abuse. So it began as the child sex abuse case. Uh, it's now a case of uh, negligence and breach of fiduciary duty. Uh, see first, second and third amended complaints, which shows their intentions are not nor have been seeking justice or bringing awareness as Wade claims. It's all about 
money and we knew this we knew this right from the get-go uh, so this is uh, uh, a copy of the second amended complaint for childhood sexual abuse um, and as I said I'll include the Twitter links in the description so you can see these documents for yourself uh, this is the third amended complaint uh, and this is the complaint for damages uh, for intentional infliction of emotional distress, negligence, negligence, supervision, etc, uh, etc. Et so it's all about the dollar. It's all about the money. Uh, we knew it would be. Where else is this tweet going? Let's have a look. Uh, so what happened then? What, uh, what is it that everyone's talking about? Well, nothing new has happened yet. It was just a typical case of MJ fan, uh, fan, fans going crazy for no reason. This is remember that happened in 2016. Is everything clear now or do you guys want to know more about Fernando's strategy? Yeah, I'm going to be looking more into this and I'll be reporting more about this on MJ News Digest. Dan Reed, director of Leaving Neverland, is at the courthouse filming. I think he's only allowed to uh, record or capture the audio. Uh, but obviously he's working on leaving Neverland too. So our YouTube recommendation of the day, Get Fit with Michael. This is from Madeline McGuan Swazi, uh, PYT Michael Jackson, Dance Workout, Dance Fitness, Stay Fit with Maddie, 80s Dance Workouts. Uh, dance fitness. This is uh, really good, a great way of uh, starting your day by getting fit with Michael. Take it away, Maddie. And I'll be linking this video in the description. And that's it for today's MJ News Digest. Thank you very much for watching. Like, comment and subscribe because the best is yet to come.